U.S. Treasury secretaries typically say that they support a strong dollar. It's kind of just boilerplate for them, even if they don't. Did Janet Yellen say anything about the U.S. currency? She actually said that it's going to be a market-determined rate. That is the mantra under the Biden administration, a stark shift from what you heard for the last four years under President Trump. Steven Mnuchin, the previous Treasury Secretary, Secretary excuse me, saying that they're actually going for a weaker dollar, which would help boost American exports. Janet Yellen is saying, well, we're actually not trying to do that. We're not trying to purposely weaken or strengthen, for that matter, the dollar. Rather, we'll deal with whatever the market decides. And that was actually an extremely important important point uh, to make as we see the dollar continue to weaken and the market really say, OK, we've gotten the green light from Janet Yellen. We can bet against the dollar even further. I love that. That's an honest answer where she took uh, politics out of the equation completely. What about China? Because before the election, a lot of investors were betting that under Joe Biden, the U.S. would be less stringent towards China, perhaps uh, would lower the temperature with China. Well, she kind of turned that narrative on the, on its head, right? We started to hear uh, some really strong language around human rights abuses, intellectual property theft, even uh, talks about fentanyl traffic, all coming uh, regarding China from Janet Yellen's talking about currency manipulation and things that they can do, things that the United States should be doing to actively compete with China. It was very clear from her comments that not only uh, will Biden not go easy on China, but in fact, she's encouraging the U.S. economy to go out to actively compete on fronts like the EV space. China is the leader in electrification. And even in climate change, China is making some big steps. So Janet Yellen, in her confirmation, really talking about those two spaces as a way for the U.S. to compete on the broader global level. That is interesting, given, again, uh, as Fed chair, she steered clear of politics so carefully. And now she's in a position where she's going to have to wade in and, and take a stance on this. Uh, let's talk about earnings, because, of course, the fourth quarter earnings season is really upon us. And we had a lot of big banks reporting on Friday. We had more reporting today, including Bank of America and Goldman Sachs. What were the big takeaways for you? Well, the banks are kind of a sideshow at the moment, just given this Yellen confirmation, Biden's inauguration tomorrow, even simply virus risk that still seems to be mounting. Nevertheless, the banks reporting quite a different take than what we heard from 2020. In 2020, we heard that lots of trading revenue was really boosting the banks, despite the fact that they had a low rate issue. The way the banks really work is that when you have low rates, they're expected to make it up in lending volume. And the banks really haven't been able to do that. The way they make it up is through their trading revenue. And and given how volatile the markets have been, the banks have been able to do that. But as we see the market cool off just a little bit, that decreases some of the margins that banks are able to make from trading revenue. And you really saw that show up, show up in today's Goldman Sachs and Bank of America earnings, both showing weaker fixed income revenue than in the quarters before. It really begs the question where their money is going to come from, where their profits are going to come from as rates remain low. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.